Hi, in this video, I'm going to share with you how I install a thermal pad on the SOC inside the MacBook Air M4. And I'll be looking at Apple's official repair guide step by step to open it up. And as for why I'm doing this, well, I'll explain as we go. I won't be running Geekbench or Benchmark or anything fancy, just sharing what I noticed in real world use after the mod. First, shut down the MacBook Air completely and unplug everything. I may not use everything you see here, but it's good to have them handy just in case. Here's the thermal pad that I'm using. It's one millimeter thick and it's 100 by 100 millimeters, which I researched it to be enough and you'll see why. And I've got affiliate links to most of the tools and parts down below. If you use them, I get a small commission. So thank you for your support. I'll need a P5 Pentalope screwdriver and maybe a magnet to pick up the screws. It has a specialized five pointed star shaped tip that you can barely see without a microscope. A pry tool if I need it because I'll likely be using this suction cup instead. Scissors to cut the pad. Or I can use a smaller one. Straight edge to help mark straight line when cutting the pad. This is a premium performance thermal pad, 4.7 stars by over 1,600 reviewers on Amazon. I'll cut this in halves, it'll be perfect. I've done my research and this is all I need. All right, let's open this up, flip it over. First, make sure the hinge vent face up north or away from you. Grab a P5 Pentalope screwdriver. Remove all four screws. Make sure you group the top pair from the bottom pair. They're different from each other. I know this thing isn't going to turn my MacBook Air into a gaming beast or anything. <laughs> But if you follow my channel, this kind of mod is exactly the kind of thing I like to mess with. Also, shout out to Apple for using five point pentalope screws because four wasn't enough, apparently. Here's one from the top and one from the bottom. The top screw has less thread than the bottom. I'm going by Apple's repair guide, so I'm using this suction cup less than four bucks instead of a pry tool to open it up. There are four internal clips to release. Here's one, two, three, and four. As you can see, this is what I'm doing for all four spots. The suction cup has a really strong grip. It's actually the kind you would use to pull out a car dent. All right, let's place it down on the first spot and squeeze the handle to create suction. You'll feel it grabs on, then pull it gently until the clip on the edge releases. Well, that was not quite gently. I might have released all the clips together, by the way. So that just show how sturdy the back aluminum plate is. So yeah, don't stress if you're a little aggressive. Yeah, I can feel all the clips are released, <laughs> pretty sure. Okay, next, slightly lift the bottom case, then pull the bottom case towards you. Just like that. And here are the clip hooks. All right, underneath here is where the logic board is located. And this chip right here is the SOC, where the M chip is located, right centered in the middle of the four screws. So ideally is where you want to place the thermal pad right over this area, the logic board. 
As you may know already, by adding a thermal pad, we are creating a bridge between the M4, M3, or M2 chip and the aluminum chassis, helping transfer heat away faster. Yeah, the thermal pad helps transfer the heat from the SOC to the aluminum back, giving you more consistent performance and less throttling when your Mac's working over time. Now, the new Mac OS 26 Tahoe introduces more graphical effects, AI background tasks like Apple intelligence, even if limited, and heavier multitasking demands, especially on Apple Silicon. While I know the M4 is efficient, it could run warmer more often, especially in thin, fanless machines like this MacBook Air. So yeah, adding a thermal pad to help draw heat from the SOC to the aluminum chassis makes more sense now than ever. Now I'm going to work around this trackpad ribbon cable. Yeah, I hope this thermal pad does well, transferring that heat to the aluminum shell and acting like a giant passive heat sink. I'm repeating this like three different ways. It's in the script. Okay, so as I lay this down, it's kind of covering this gap right here. I will just shave off a little so it fits better. I want the heat to be able to circulate a bit more in this area instead of trapping it underneath the pad. Just a tiny bit off. Boom, thermal pad haircut complete. Sometimes a small cut makes a big difference. So again, I'm going to work around the ribbon cable. Just working around this ribbon cable so it doesn't feel smothered. And because the ribbon cable is delicate and not meant to transfer heat. So you see, I'm going to place this side over the graphite. It doesn't matter which side you want to use. It's designed that way, so don't worry. Since this side has the transparent protective film, I don't want to forget to remove it, so I'm going to fold it. So you can see why you want to have the blue side facing up, so it's easier to see that you need to remove the protective film. You gotta make sure it fits just right, because you don't want your MacBook Air thinking it's wearing an oversized jacket. You know, I never thought I'd be applying blue rectangles to high-end Apple hardware. But here we are, and it feels kind of satisfying. This feels like building a Lego set, except if you mess up, it costs you $1,200 or $300. Flip this up a bit to see if it's still alive. I'm just going to fill in the inner gap. It's like Tetris, but with thermal conductivity and slightly higher stakes. Don't worry, it's not perfect science. It's more like close enough, but with confidence. Just give it a little pat, like, there you go, buddy, stay cool. <laughs> Finally, that would be my last piece. Basically, I just covered the logic board area with the thermal pad. You can see the logic board starts right here. All right, let's peel off the plastic film. Again, it's very satisfying. Make sure the pieces are sticky so you don't miss anything. Now putting the back case back, you want to make sure that you slide the screws back into the hooks of the back shell. Leave a little gap at the hinge and press it down and push forward. 
using two hands. There you go, you can hear the click. You can lift it up to see if there are any gaps around the seams. Good job. To really secure it, I'm going to screw in the top two first before I press the bottom case down until the internal clips click. Have a look. The hinge vent is up here. Now I press the bottom case down until the four internal clips snap into place. That's the last snap. You should hear four clicks total. And there you go. You can examine it along the seams if there are any gaps before screwing in the remaining two screws. Just two more screws and we're completely done. Thanks for your patience for keeping up this far. And we're now good to go. All done. Now you can check along the seams to see if there are any gaps. There is one right here. I believe this is how it's supposed to be because of the thermal pad placement, but everywhere else it's perfect. So the next day after some use, it's closed up a bit. It seems over time the pressure of the screws and the slight compression of the thermal pad help everything settle in tighter. So if you notice a tiny gap after reassembly, don't panic. It may naturally compress and even out even more. The moral of the story, aluminum's chill. Just give it a day or two. <laughs> After installing the thermal pad and using the MacBook Air for a bit, I noticed a difference. When I run Final Cut Pro, the back doesn't heat up as quickly as it did before. Before, I could feel the heat almost right away near the ports, but now it seems like the heat spreads more evenly across the aluminum back, so that area doesn't feel as hot anymore. Even with other apps on top of Final Cut Pro, the heat doesn't spike as fast as it used to. The aluminum doesn't feel cold, of course. That one hot spot near the edge isn't as sharp anymore. And that tells me that the thermal pad is definitely doing something. It's not a miracle, but it's a noticeable improvement in daily use. Oh, just a quick tip. I've got these little stands to help elevate the MacBook. It gives the bottom more room to breathe, so the heat can dissipate more easily through the aluminum chassis. Alright, that's all I've got for this video. I hope it was helpful, and as always, thank you for watching.